have noticed, there is another event going on on campus today. Our programming club, Lancer ha SF Hacks, is hosting our first ever hackathon, Lancer Hacks, in Burns Pavilion. I'm lucky enough to be the sponsorship director for this event, so let's take a moment to say hi and learn more. Please welcome one of my co-organizers, Adishri Gatare. All righty, you're good to go. Go ahead. Thanks, Aishani. Hi, everyone. I'm Adishri. Welcome to Lancer Hacks. In case, for those of you wondering, a hackathon is an event where students work together in teams to brainstorm, create, and present some game or program. At Lancer Hacks, students also participate in workshops sponsored by various companies, programming challenges, dodgeball, and cup stacking. Right now, people are trickling in back after lunch and are working on their projects with their teams. At Lancer Hacks today, we have 124 people, 35% of whom are female. This is actually a very impressive figure. Even though we live in Silicon Valley, there's a huge gender gap in technology. On the organizing team for this event itself, Aishani and I are two females of 12 total team members. This disparity can be quite intimidating, especially at first. With these situations, it's important to remember to keep the bigger picture in mind and build upon the opportunities you receive. In this scenario, specifically to advance girls and women in computer science and other STEM fields. It is my pleasure to introduce your next speaker, who has faced this issue of a lack of women in tech, but is here today to share with you her insight and growth from such experiences. Please welcome freshman Maya Chandra. It was the summer of 2015 a month before I started seventh grade. I was very excited to attend a summer camp where I could learn programming for the first time. As I walked through the parking lot and into the camp, I noticed something wasn't right. Everyone around me was a boy. I thought I would find more girls in the main hall where all the campers were gathering, but that wasn't the case. It soon became very clear to me that there are almost no girls in the entire camp. And afterwards, when we broke into sections, I was the only girl in my section. It became clear that I was a minority at the camp. I suddenly felt lonely and unqualified to even attend this basic programming camp. This got me thinking about how many women are in the technology industry. According to the National Center for Women in Technology, only 25% of the technology industry is made up by women. 25%. And this number has actually decreased over time. The low representation of women in technology was perfectly modeled by the small number of girls at my camp. It strikes me as odd that there is a lack of women in technology, specifically computer science, because technology is pervasive in all aspects of our lives and is the fastest growing part of the economy. Women are half the population and nearly half the workforce, so there is no reason we shouldn't be half the tech industry, which misses out on talent, innovation, and diversity due to its uneven representation. So, where are the women in technology? Why are they hard to find? And how can we fix it? There must be some fundamental reasons for the lack of women in tech. Let's deconstruct this problem into its pieces. To begin with, we have a lack of girls and women who study computer science. Women hold only 18% of undergraduate degrees in computer science. Why? Going back to the story of my first programming camp, what I experienced is not unique. This happens to many girls turning them off from technology. The roots of this attitude are found in a broader stereotype that boys are more suited for all of the STEM fields. Girls of all ages feel unqualified to take even an introductory class in computer science because that's what society signals to them. Let's imagine playing with a set of dominoes. You knock one over, the next one falls, then the one after that, and so on. That's exactly how this situation unfolds. 
A girl won't take computer science in high school because of stereotypes and stigmas. A domino falls. She is then likely to avoid pursuing it in college because it is completely new, and another domino falls. Then, she is led to a career in a different field, and yet another domino falls. Later, a little girl won't see any female role models in technology, leading her to lack the inspiration and confidence to enter the field. That's how the dominoes fall, and this domino effect happens over and over again. Next, women who do enter the technology industry experience two main challenges. The first is not very surprising and is found in every industry. Women make less money than men for doing the same work. Specifically in technology, 63% of women make less money than men. Let me repeat that. 63% of women make less money than men and it only gets worse for women who are younger. Also, women in this industry face an unwelcoming environment with issues ranging from stereotyping to sexual harassment. One high profile harassment case was Susan Fowler at Uber, whose report led to widespread changes both at the company and throughout the tech industry. And there are people like James Damore at Google who publicly wrote that the underrepresentation of women in technology and leadership is due to biological differences between men and women. I, for one, do not feel as though biology makes me less competent than the boys around me. I am sure Susan Kerr, who created the user interface for the original Apple computer, did not feel this way. James Damore is an extreme example, but clearly shows an underlying attitude that women are inadequate in computer science. One statistic sums all these factors up. Women leave the technology industry at a rate of 41% compared to men at 17%. On a positive note, there are many people trying to address these issues. One of the most well-known programs that advocates for girls in computer science is Girls Who Code, which organizes both after-school clubs and summer camps where girls learn programming. I am a member of the Girls Who Code Club here at St. Francis, and I enjoy being able to foster my interest in computer science by doing fun things like going to hackathons with my friends. There are also organizations helping women currently in the industry, like Women Who Code, which has created a community of over 100,000 technical women and advise technology companies on hiring women. Leading tech companies like Apple and Microsoft support these programs, which work towards increasing female representation in technology. But we have to do a lot more to ensure that women have their rightful place in technology. To address the domino effect I mentioned earlier, it is imperative that all high schools include computer science as a part of their core curriculums. Given the importance of technology in our lives, all students should learn basic computer science. Girls will then be exposed to the subject, giving them the opportunity to pursue computer science in college and a career in technology. Also, to address some of the issues working women face, technology companies should use a variation of the Rooney Rule used by the NFL. This rule requires teams to interview minorities for management and coaching positions and has increased minority representation in the NFL since it was implemented. Companies like Facebook have shown that applying an adaptation of the Rooney Rule increases opportunities for women in the technology industry. So, today we have established a few key facts. There is not enough emphasis on computer science at the high school level which results in a correspondingly low number of female college graduates in computer science. This, along with an unwelcoming environment, ultimately results in a lower number of women in the technology industry. So, what do I want you to take away from my talk? When I am ready to join the tech industry, I don't want to be the only woman in the room. I ask all of you to encourage girls around you with an interest in computer science to follow their passion. Together, 
we can end the search for women in technology once and for all. Thank you.